Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered where it all came from? It is a question that connects every one of us across time, across cultures. We live in a vast and beautiful universe, and our best science tells us it had a beginning. We call this beginning the Big Bang. Not an explosion in space, but the start of space itself. The moment time began to tick forward, the beginning of our cosmic story. It is the point from which everything emerged, from the smallest grain of sand to the most distant galaxy. Our scientific tools are powerful. They let us look back across billions of years to see the light from the universe's infancy. With mathematics and physics, we rewind the cosmic clock moment by moment. Our equations describe expansion with incredible precision. But as we near that first instant, our tools begin to fail. Equations that work for almost 13.8 billion years break down at the very start, pointing to infinite density and temperature. Scientists call this breakdown a singularity, not a place, but a warning on a map. Here, our knowledge ends, a boundary, the edge of what we can explain. A mathematical wall we have not learned to see past or through. This limit is an invitation to ask deeper questions. One of the most exciting new ideas comes from loop quantum gravity. This theory reimagines the fabric of space. Space is not a smooth sheet. Up close, it is woven from incredibly small, finite pieces, like threads in a cloth. In this view, space is made of tiny, indivisible loops. There is a smallest possible unit, a quantum of volume. If space is granular, it can never be compressed to an infinitely small point. There is a physical limit to density. This means the singularity may never have existed. Instead of an impossible beginning, the theory suggests a big bounce. Imagine a universe before ours, contracting over billions of years, growing denser, yet never reaching a singularity, only a maximum density allowed by quantum physics. At that extreme, fundamental forces would change. Gravity, pulling everything together, would become repulsive, pushing everything apart with incredible force. This is the bounce, the explosive new beginning we call the Big Bang. Was this the first bounce, or one of infinitely many cycles of contraction and expansion? We do not yet know. Another branch of theoretical physics, string theory, proposes that reality's building blocks are not point particles, but unimaginably small vibrating strings of energy. An electron, a photon, a quark. Each is a different vibrational pattern of the same underlying string, like musical notes on a guitar. String theory requires extra spatial dimensions, 10 or 11 in total, most curled up so tightly we cannot see them giving reality a hidden depth. Within this higher dimensional space are brains, vast membranes. Our three-dimensional universe could be one such brain. There could be other brains, other universes, floating parallel to ours in the bulk. They can move, ripple and sometimes collide. The Big Bang could have been the energy released when two brain worlds collided, appearing to us as a beginning from a single point but rooted in a larger unseen space. From within our brain, it looks like a birth. From the higher dimensional perspective, it is a cosmic collision. A mind-bending picture, strings, extra dimensions, and brains offering a different path beyond the edge of our understanding. The idea that the universe repeats itself is ancient. Modern physics revives it in cyclic models. Our universe is expanding, and that expansion is accelerating. Some theories suggest the acceleration may change. If dark energy weakens or shifts, gravity could dominate again. The expansion would slow, stop, and reverse. Galaxies rush together in a big crunch, merging into an incredibly hot, dense state, resembling the early Big Bang. In big bounce models, a singularity is avoided. Extreme conditions trigger a new Big Bang. The universe is reborn. Matter and energy are rearranged to start a new expansion, an eternal loop, destruction, 
then creation, a self-sustaining cosmos needing no external cause. Each cycle could repeat, or the laws might shift, our universe, the latest chapter in an infinite book. These models remain speculative and face challenges, but they offer a powerful alternative to a single absolute beginning. Long before telescopes and equations, people asked the same question, where did everything come from? Creation myths are not scientific theories, but profound expressions of human wonder, philosophical ancestors of our cosmological questions. In Norse myth, creation begins with Ginungagap, a primordial abyss between a realm of fire and a realm of ice, a space of pure potential. From the meeting of fire and ice came Ymir, from him, life, the worlds of gods and humans, order from an undifferentiated state. In Egypt, none was an infinite, dark, watery abyss. From it, the first mound arose, and the Creator brought order, yet none persisted at the edges to reclaim the world. Philosophers ask, must every event have a cause? This leads to the uncaused cause, the prime mover, suggesting the chain cannot regress forever. At some point there must be a first cause, outside normal cause and effect. Many identify this with God, others argue an infinite chain is possible. If time has no beginning, as in cyclic or bouncing universes, the question, what came before, may be meaningless. A more mysterious idea, consciousness might play a fundamental role. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics hint that observation affects reality. Could consciousness be woven into the fabric of reality? Not mainstream science, but a provocative philosophical speculation. To get even closer to the Big Bang, scientists developed cosmic inflation. In a tiny fraction of a second, the universe grew astonishingly fast. Space expanded faster than light, swelling from smaller than an atom to the size of a grapefruit almost instantly. Inflation elegantly explains why the universe is so large, so uniform, and so flat, a cornerstone of modern cosmology. In eternal inflation, the process never fully ends. Most space inflates forever, like a vast bubbling ocean. In small regions, inflation randomly slows and stops, Energy is released, creating a hot, dense state, a local Big Bang. Each such event births a new universe, a pocket bubble. Our cosmos would be one bubble among many. These pocket universes are isolated by ever-expanding space, beyond our horizon, forever out of reach. Thus the Big Bang was not the beginning of everything, but the local beginning of our pocket of space and time. Before our Big Bang, there was the eternally inflating ocean. The multiverse would have no beginning and no end, a dynamic reality constantly giving birth to new worlds. Our entire cosmic history becomes one small local story in an unimaginably vast and eternal saga. The fundamental constants, the strength of gravity, the mass of the electron, the energy of empty space, seem exquisitely fine-tuned for life. Change them slightly, and the universe collapses too soon, or never forms stars and galaxies at all. One answer is design. A creator intended a life-friendly cosmos. Another is the multiverse. Countless universes with varied laws. Most universes would be sterile, empty voids, dense fireballs, or strange matter but with infinitely many, some will allow complexity and life. We observe a life-friendly universe because we could not exist in any other. This is the anthropic principle. In that view, we simply won a cosmic lottery. These mind-bending ideas, a bouncing cosmos, colliding brains, an eternal multiverse, transform our understanding of before. The Big Bang may not be the ultimate beginning. It might have been a transition, a collision, a local event in a grander reality. 
before becomes a landscape, another universe, a higher dimension, an endless ocean of creative potential. Time might be a line, a cycle, a branching tree, or something far stranger. This wonder connects us to our ancestors. Today, our stories are written in mathematics and tested with powerful telescopes. The quest blends science, philosophy, and our innate curiosity, expanding knowledge and imagination. We hunt faint signals of a previous bounce or collision and probe nature at extreme energies. Progress comes from asking the biggest questions